I always feel like um, my identity was lost or still undiscovered somewhere along those lines. So I thought of making a project about how all the different experiences that I've been through and the things that make me who I am today have contributed to sort of create a puzzle to who I am. And uh, so I was experimenting with that concept and I decided to do a conceptual photography project about it. And uh, through the project, I was trying to express my interests and also how these interests have influenced me and have contributed to my personality, roughly. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> so what's a conceptual photography project mean? Um, so um, it's basically like thinking of a concept and then trying to visualize that concept, which I think is it's the hardest step uh, in photography. Like you're trying to visualize something in your brain, but you're also trying to interpret it into something uh, concrete um, and hoping that the audience who are seeing your work would also understand that same concept that you're thinking of and that theme you're working on. Um, so uh, to me, that was the most interesting genre in photography in general. And that's why I decided to work with that th with that uh, genre to create or recreate the photography project I did. And what sort of photographers did you find or influences did you find? Um, so um, I found a couple. Um, Cindy Sherman was a big influence because she always worked. Um, I think she's sort of a female pioneer in conceptual photography. And, uh, and then the one who I kind of, she kind of drew uh, the what is it, the blueprint <laughs> um, for the uh, for the project I was working with is uh, Nikki S. Lee. Um, she did a very long series um, that took roughly, I think, uh, two to three years to present, um, where she went into different cultures in the United States and just lived with them and spoke like them and just did everything that would represent that culture. And, uh, and then asked someone to take a f photograph of her with that certain group. And to me, that really grabbed my attention because um, I never really thought of it in that way. I never really considered that, oh, when I sit with that friend group, I'm this certain person. And then when I go sit with this other friend group, I'm this other person. Or, for example, if I would walk down the street, that is just a side of me. And then when I'm sitting in a cafe, that's a different side of me, it, like... That was really that's what grabbed my attention about uh, Nikki S. Lee's project because I never considered it in that way. I never thought of the concept in that way, and uh, yeah. So in a way, you actually started to kind of recreate um, your own kind of photos. Yes. That were like visualizations of who you are, like those different yeah. dimensions yes. to your personality. Yeah. So I, I uh, did a series of uh, 12 photographs, if I recall correctly. <laughs> and um, in each photograph, I was in a different setting. And um, uh, what was cool about it was that all the settings that I was in were actually places I would go to on an everyday basis. And But then when I, th when I thought about it, I was like, Oh, okay. So when I go, for example, to the souk, I dress in a different way than if I were coming to uni, for example. Or if I were taking a taxi, I would, again, dress or represent myself in a different way than if I were in my own car. And that kind of um, set, the, again, the blueprint for my whole project, um, trying to represent myself in these different environments but again, these environments are part of my everyday life and they just add on to my everyday experience and hence they basically create who I am right now. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I really like the, the photos. Thank um, you. I think um, it's, a, you know, it's, it's a very, you know, the, the combination of photographs of you in different contexts are actually mm -hmm. very interesting and the way that you look at the camera um, kind of, makes you stand out from from the yeah, situation correct. you're in it's almost like you're looking back at the camera mm -hmm. so this is all part of your approach yeah i was trying to break the fourth wall <laughs> what's the fourth wall um so that's um 
uh, like when uh, when the person or the object in the uh, in the photograph tries to invite the audience into the uh, the uh, the photograph or even a film and um, and I was trying to do that so that the the audience would be able to relate to the uh, person I am because I'm I'm sure <laughs> that everyone goes through this at some point in their life and um, I was always left with this thought that oh maybe it's just me maybe it's just because I was at so many different places in such a short time and uh, I'm just like still trying to adapt to it and find who I am and it's like the <laughs> quarter life crisis <laughs> but I feel like if everyone it, we just need to pinpoint the the concept and then everyone will be like oh yeah I went I, I go through that or I went through it or I'm expecting to go through it at some point in my life so I was trying to grab the audience and invite them in the image and be like oh because we we don't realize that um, when we're with different people they bring out different sides to our personality and and it, it doesn't necessarily change or who I am but what it does is that when we are with a certain group, they highlight uh, like different aspects to your personality and then tone down others. And that just keeps adding up. Um, and then there was this, I think it was a Picasso saying um, that was uh, you're like uh, you're like the addition of the four people or the four, the third. Wait, what was it? <laughs> it was really cool. It was a really cool quote. It was your. Um, you're the addition of the six closest people to you or something like that. And um, and then if, if you really think about it, that, yeah, so the people who are closest to you, uh, you feel comfortable with them because they highlight aspects of your personality that you want to bring out. And then the people you feel somewhat uncomfortable around is because they highlight certain aspects of your personality that you don't really want to show people, that you don't really want to bring up. So I was trying to like show that to the audience and be like, hey, it's okay. We all go through it. You just need to acknowledge it. And because we always think that if uh, if we're not who we want to be, uh, then we're kind of changing and we're all scared of change. <laughs> so it'd be like, oh, I'm changing. Oh, I'm becoming this different person. But when in reality, you're not really becoming a different person. Your personality is just being highlighted in different ways, depending on the environment, the situations that you're in, you're in basically. Yeah, there's one photo in particular that um, that you know draws me in mm -hmm. a bit is the one of you in a cafe, which I guess I presume is kind of like a Starbucks or yeah. something like that, where behind you, I mean, you're there with your with your. Uh, you know, Mac top, yeah. <laughs> you know, laptop, uh, the symbol of the, uh, you know, the sort of Western mm -hmm. uh, computer technology world. And then you're actually in front of a map of the world. Mm -hmm. um, and you're also in this very generic corporate yeah. coffee culture, <laughs> you know, the, something that began many years ago in, in the West Coast of America and now has become the kind of Standard, standard across the world and I thought that's very interesting and I and I wonder um, you know I mean obviously a lot of the other images uh, tap into these different aspects of mm -hmm. you as well and um, and your your origins or your uh, kind of uh, cultural identity mm -hmm. um, but I wonder is there something occurs to me that maybe there's a sort of gendered or feminine photography approach here that's something that you know that that is particularly resonates or speaks to females or to women yeah um in its in its kind of photographic approach and how your cultural identity is kind of i would say kind of stretched mm -hmm. you know um because you you come as you said you come from sudan or you're of sudanese heritage yeah. but yet you've lived in these different places that have and you've studied here in the auc which is yeah. essentially a kind of western uh, model of education mm -hmm. so you know i think a lot of people in the world are like feel globalized now yeah. you know <laughs> um and essentially globalization is predominantly a western 
phenomena, yeah. the Western cultural phenomena. Um, so I just wonder how, I mean, you know, when you look back at these images now, have you got any further insights or how do you read them now with the distance of a year or so? Yeah, so um, it's true what you said. <laughs> Most of, some of the images are pretty Western. Um, or sorry, they are a product of globalization. But I wanted to use that to my advantage because yet we yes, we do um, live in a globalized world. But at the same time, everyone is seeking individuality. And it's very difficult to become an individual when you're in a globalized setting. Um, so now when I look back at the pictures, um, <laughs> if anything, I'm more confused than ever. <laughs> so, so, um, it is true. Like we, we go to cafes, we go to, um, to school and we do receive this Western kind of education. And then, um, because of that, because we're learning so much about globalization and, the uh, and the West, we kind of lose touch with our, like for me, it's my African heritage or the Middle Eastern heritage. And um, and then um, at, at the same time, if you're at home or you go to a ahwa on the, on the street, <laughs> you, um, you do experience that like authentic, here in Egypt, it's the authentic Egyptian, like or, oriental atmosphere. Um, and for me at home, it would be like the Sudanese uh, heritage. Um, so, yeah, so uh, I, I try to use globalization to my advantage because, again, um, uh, it, it did have a gendered approach because I am a woman and I am a woman in, in some of the atmospheres that I or some of the environment that I was um, captured in. Um, it's not um, ideal for women to be in. Um, so one was at, a, at the, in the Sug and another one um, was uh, was in a like again an Oriental coffee shop, um, and the one that I had in Starbucks was also uh, around men, <laughs> and um, we, women don't necessarily feel comfortable just sitting next to men and only men, so you feel that kind of like fear. But I used that to my advantage to bring out, um, uh, I don't know, like, like to, uh, to highlight um, how these things, yes, do contribute to the way we think, to the way we feel. And uh, again, I was trying to relate to the audience because whether they're men or women, they should be able to understand the, the, like the theme or the message I was trying to address. And have you any plans to extend or continue this project? Yeah, I was um, I was planning to do it, um, but in ju just in a different context. Um, so I'm going to Sudan in January, and um, the 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 reason why I thought of that was because most of the photography about Sudan is documentary or is street photography or photojournalism. Um, so I thought of changing it into a conceptual, to add, like in, adding in a conceptual um, aspect to it. And um, Sudan is a place that no, not a lot of people know about. And we have so many different cultures and all of these different cultures or all, <laughs> all of these different cultures also have... Um, different uh, gender issues so um, if I were to go to certain places in the country I would have a different role as a woman um, let alone as a woman who's not veiled as a woman who is Muslim so I was trying to I'm trying to play with that concept and try to highlight or the different aspects um, in the country. And uh, again, I'm trying to bring out uh, all the different heritage, like the different uh, traditions we have and uh, the different household um, uh, environments because it would be different if you have, for example, a house in Khartoum and then you would go to a, another area in uh, the city Undurman, and then if you were to leave the capital altogether and just go to the west or the north 
all these places are different and they all have different um, like expectations for women and uh, for the gender in general. So I'm trying to play with that concept. Okay. Well, thank you very much for coming thank in you. and look forward to seeing, you know, <laughs> the second part, yeah, the hopefully. Sudanese part of this project. Yeah, hopefully. Thank you very much for having me here. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.